Hey everyone, how are you all doing? Now friends, the AWS Cloud Practitioner exam is your golden ticket to enter the fascinating world of Amazon AWS. But the problem is that you have to undergo loads of theory to really understand the core concept of AWS Cloud Computing. Well, one of the solution and one of the recommended solution is that you always test your knowledge, always test your understanding and the core concepts with the real exam like questions. And I'm sure you must have done this in your schooling and colleges as well, where after after reading the textbooks, you always wanted to test your knowledge against the real exam like questions or the previous exam questions. Well, we have all done that. So let's accept it. This is wonderful way to test your knowledge and prepare for the examination. And that's exactly what we do in these kind of videos. So in today's video as well, my friends, I will give you some latest and important questions on AWS Cloud Practitioner exam. And not just that, besides the questions and the answers, I will give you AWS documentation so that you can do some such study and also validate the answer well what more you can ask for so let's straight away dive into the first question so here comes the very first question for today question number 201 part 25 now we are going to cover really diverse and important concepts today so stick around in this video so now let's read the question the question is saying that which tool can be used to assess audit and evaluate configurations of your resources and your options are Billing Dashboard, Option B, AWS Trusted Advisor, Option C, AWS Health Dashboard, and lastly, Option D, AWS Config. And the correct answer is Option D, AWS Config. So AWS Config is the tool that can be used to access, audit, and evaluate configuration of your resources. Now let's check out some documentation. So here you can see in this documentation, as I just said that AWS config allows you to access, audit and evaluate configuration of your resources. And how exactly it enables you to do that? Well, here you can see in this diagram, the AWS config allows you to manage. So you can discover your resources, you can record the configuration, understand the relationships and capture the changes. And then it also enables you to evaluate what you can do in evaluation. Well, you can check the resources compliance with custom and manage AWS config rules before and after provisioning. And once you manage, you evaluate, then you can simplify. And in this simplify stage, you can use the conformance packs to more easily deploy multiple rules and remediations across an account or AWS region. And this leads to operational troubleshooting, compliance and auditing, change management and security monitoring. And here are some of the use cases for AWS config. So first of all, it helps you streamline operational troubleshooting and change management. Secondly, it deploys a compliance as code framework. And thirdly, it continuously audits security monitoring and analysis. And you will be surprised here. You can see that the meta is actually using AWS config. And this has enabled the meta to achieve scalable, secure by design security and compliance with AWS config. And I think that's good enough for you to read about this very popular AWS service. And also my friends, before I jump to the next question, I really want to highlight this service here, which is AWS Trusted Advisor. And most probably you will get some questions around this service here. And I've taken many questions on AWS Trusted Advisor in the previous parts. So please watch all the previous parts, especially the part 22, in which I've taken a lot of important question on AWS Trusted Advisor. And with that, let's move on to the next question. Question number 202 that says, which is the primary use case for the Amazon Guard Duty? And your options are option A, prevention of DDoS attack. Now, how many of you actually know what are the DDoS attack or the SQL injections? It's a very important and common security threat. So let's see how many of you actually know these concepts. And now the second option is protection against the SQL injection attacks. And option C is automatic monitoring for threats to AWS workloads option D automatic provisioning of AWS resources and the correct answer for this question is option C automatic monitoring for threats to AWS workloads now it's a pretty straightforward question we are given with the service that is Amazon guard duty and we have to tell the primary use case for the same but in case you really want to understand what exactly is Amazon guard duty and how it helps you to protect your AWS account workloads and data with intelligent threat detection then this is the documentation and friends I really want to show you this document here in which I have collated the documentation from all the previous parts and this part as well. You will find all the documentation from AWS, all the links from the AWS for each part in this documentation. So you can simply click on the episode number, for example, episode one, and then you will reach to this section here that will give you links to all the documentation that I shared in that particular episode. 
so you can see all the episodes and the documentation links are listed in this documentation so please go ahead and make the maximum use of this documentation that will give you all the relevant documentation for aws cloud practitioner exam and the best part it's absolutely free now moving on with the question number 203 the question is saying that which aws service facilitate building secure and scalable mobile and web application offering features such as real-time updates and offline functionalities and you have to choose two correct options your options are aws lambda option b aws app sync option c aws code deploy option d amazon api gateway and the option e aws amplify so let me tell you what are the keywords or the important sections in this question so that you can see in this underlying text mobile and web application and you have to make both of these applications secure and scalable so the first correct answer based on the information given in the question is option b aws app sync and the second correct option is option e aws amplify and here you can see that aws app sync enables you to connect apps to the data and events with secure and serverless and performant graphql and pubsub apis pubsub is basically publish and subscribe on the other hand the aws amplify well that enables you to build full stack web and mobile application within some hours and with that documentation let's jump to the next question question number 204 that says that which of the following is a web application for managing aws resources and your options are option a aws partner solution fighter option b aws support center option c aws management console and option d aws marketplace now we just saw a question on aws marketplace so you can already eliminate this option because now you understand what is aws marketplace used for now coming to the aws partner solution finder well the finder it provides the aws customers with a centralized place to search discover or connect with the trusted apn technology and the consulting partners based on the customer's business need however it is not the place for you to manage aws resources and then we have aws support center well as the name suggests it's actually a service where you can raise the ticket whenever you're finding some problem with the aws services get connected with the aws support staff and that leaves us with just one option and that is the correct option for this question option c aws management console now let's very quickly check what exactly is aws management console so this is the documentation from aws you can read all about the aws management console and how you can use this console to interact with all the aws services but let me quickly summarize this for you so here you can read all about the aws management console but let me give you very simple words basically AWS management is nothing but a web based application that really lets you access all the broad range of services offered by the Amazon web services and this also provides you easy navigation and centralized access to all these services. Now let me tell you what exactly you can use this AWS management console so you can deploy your new application you can monitor the existing one you can also manage your account including the monitoring monthly spend and your billing activities then you can also use it to create and update the existing user groups or build new application so pretty much everything my friend that you have to interact with the aws services that you can do from the aws management console and in case you are coming from the azure background or gcp background or any other cloud platform then each of these cloud platforms have their own management console where you log in and then you interact with all the services you create the services and you also maintain the existing services now let's check out the next question question number 205 that says a workload on aws will run for a foreseeable future by using consistent number of aws ec2 instances what pricing model will minimize the cost while ensuring that compute resources remain available and what are your options option a spot instances option b reserved instances option c on demand instances and lastly option d dedicated hosts now before i tell you the answer let me tell you what are the keywords given here first of all we have this one here foreseeable future and then we also have this line here consistent number of amazon ec2 instances so friends this line here foreseeable future by using the consistent number of amazon ec2 instances this line is very important as it gives you an indication that we are looking for the resources we want to use the resources for a considerably long period of time and the best part is that when you reserve the instances for a longer period of time say for one year or three years then you get a huge discount from amazon aws a similar concept exists also in microsoft azure and google gcp 
So based on all these keywords and all these important sections, I can tell you the correct answer for this question is option B, reserved instances. So let's check out some documentation on the same. So here you can read all about the Amazon reserved instances. And here you can read using the reserved instances, it provides you significant saving on Amazon EC2 cost as compared to the cost for the on-demand instances. It's a very simple concept, my friends. When you're buying or you're reserving the instances, EC2 instances for a longer period of time, it's just that you are giving Amazon AWS a green flag that I'll be using all these resources for this much period of time. And then because of this reservation, because of this guarantee for the AWS, it provides you with handsome discounts. So this is the best part. Both the parties are happy. AWS is happy and you are also happy. Here you can understand what are the key variables that determine the reserved instances pricing. And you know what? In all the cloud platforms, I have observed one very similar thing that all of them, either they provide this long-term commitment for one year or directly then for three years. So there is no two years, no four years or five years. So this is the two choices that you have one year or three year. And interestingly, you have multiple payment options as well. So you can pay all upfront in one shot. Otherwise, if you want, you can also pay the partial upfront or maybe no upfront. And friends, towards the end of the video, I really have a request to please like the video. And trust me, that's the only way for us to grow. So please like the video, subscribe to the channel and press that bell icon as I bring loads of quality content on AWS, Azure and artificial intelligence. And that's all for today. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.